Hello, hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yanni Q, and welcome everyone here in the region and further afield. Um, welcome to the inaugural Catapult Lockdown Virtual Salon. This afternoon, we'll be in discussion with Jonathan, Jonathan Van Erneman from St. Martin. But before we begin, I'd like to express huge thanks to the Catapult partners, including the American Friends of Jamaica, Kingston Creative, and Fresh Milk for making our encounter here this afternoon a reality. Many thanks to you. And I, before I introduce Jonathan, I just want to say to you, please feel free to ask questions, uh, which we'll get a chance to answer in the Q&A period that will follow. We'll have about 15, 20 minutes to do so. But today we have our first creative, our first um, artist who's joining us in this encounter, in this um, encuentro, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Van Arnhem from St. Martin. And he is a young uh, dancer, choreographer, teacher, uh, in, who, who worked primarily in St. Martin and studied also in the United States with various uh, movers, various dancers, various choreographers there. He's now returned to St. Martin where he's working at the National Institute for the Arts. And so today we're gonna to be talking about some of his experiences both at home and abroad. So welcome, Jonathan, welcome to our first uh, encounter this afternoon. Hey, Hi, you. thank you, thank you. Very excited to be here. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you and to have you here with us today and to begin our conversation. So I, I see this as a dialogue in motion, right? So as we mm -hmm. move through uh, the different kind of moments in your own trajectory as an artist, as a creative, um, working at home and working abroad. But I want you, you know, St. Martin doesn't always enter our imaginary when we think about the Caribbean. Uh, it doesn't always, it's there, but it doesn't always enter in the way of some of the larger islands perhaps. And it has a very interesting history. So I want to begin to talk about the, what I would call the persistence of coloniality within the space of St. Martin. And what mm -hmm. does that do to an artist like yourself and in terms of other artists in terms of the creative production that is possible, um, especially in a space where you have two colonial ties, both the Dutch and the French. So if you could just start us off by there, introducing your island nation and talking a bit about, about that. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so I am from St. Martin. Uh, I reside on the Dutch side. Um, and St. Martin, as you said, it, it it has a very unique history, um, especially when compared to different Caribbean islands. So um, St. Martin is not independent. St. Martin, uh, the Dutch side is um, autonomous, but is it is still under the kingdom of the Netherlands. And the French mm -hmm. side is, is regarded as an overseas territory of France. Um, and so um, even in that, there's differences in the way that the French side relates to France and the Dutch side relates to the Netherlands. Um, and in recent years, we've seen that the French side has been more, um, more aligned with France um, in mm -hmm. the sense that they, they are less facing the Dutch side. And so there's less collaboration. And that's been the, the, um, the source of a lot of tension on the island. Um, so just a little bit of a, a backdrop, St. Martin. So it's like an invisible line then in terms of the two. The two yeah, so I mean. It, we we say it's it's um I mean we say the Dutch side we say the French side but honestly like for for as long as Saint Martin has existed it's always been one island it's always been one people you know there are family ties that go across there are um you know relationships that go across there's there's fathers that live on the French side their kids are on the Dutch side their wives are on the Dutch side there's people who live and work on different sides, people who go to school mm. on different sides. So, I mean, it's very, very uh, integrated. Um, and so this idea of separation is more to do with colonialism than to do with the actual um, on the ground uh, behavior of the people. Um, and it's been like that since the beginning, actually. Uh, so since Martin, um, St. Martin was colonized by the Dutch and the French, and I mean, St. Martin has passed hands between the Dutch and the French and the, the British and the Spanish and, you know, like the, the history of colonialism. But um, if you look at the, the, uh, the ties, it's always existed because actually some of the enslavers on the Dutch side were also enslavers on the French side. And so you wow. have this persistence on both sides of both being oppressed um, by, the same, by the same folks. Yeah, right. Um, 
And then when you have the abolition of, of slavery on the French side in 1848, um, you know, the Dutch didn't abolish slavery until 1863. And so technically there was a 15 year period between the French side and the Dutch side where you could be enslaved on one side and free on the other side. And wow. so what that, what that wow. led to, which is crazy, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the island is 37 square it over miles. There. <laughs> it is 37 square miles. Um, wow, so it's, it's wow. a tiny space. Um, and so because of that, there was actually a de facto emancipation on mm -hmm. the Dutch side. Um, and so shortly after the French side abolished slavery, the, the folks on the Dutch side, they, they had to, they, they had to also um, not officially abolish slavery, but treat people as if they were free because if right, not, exactly. it would have, you know, it would have been chaos. chaos. Mm -hmm. And so there's always been this, this intermingling between the French side and the Dutch side. But um, I mean, again, there is still a French side and a Dutch side. So the colonialism right. still persists. And I think that, you know, that, that um, detracts from what a nation is able to do in terms of, of nation building. And I mean, I, yeah. I think we'll get a little bit more into nation building. Yeah, later. for sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I, I do, there's an interesting uh, thing here as you're speaking in terms of, there's a kind of cultural intimacy, notwithstanding the political divide, right? So the political divide almost seems rather arbitrary. So I'm, I'm curious, when we think about the Caribbean as a kind of crosswords culture, a crucible of the world, uh, of world cultures. St. Martin represents a really unique microcosm of this mixture. How does this um, enter into or hinder or pre present opportunities in terms of what it means as source material for creating works of art for you? Sure, so St. Martin in a lot of cases is regarded as a melting pot, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of like the, the draw in, but um, it's actually a case of, of erasure in some senses mm -hmm. because um, what happened was, um, you know, after the abolition of slavery, the, the industries on the island slowly started to decline. And so um, we were known for, for really a strong um, sugar industry and rum and, and salt. And those industries slowly started to decline. So St. Martin became an island of subsistence up until, you know, the 80s and 90s where there's this huge boom of tourism on both right. the Dutch side and the French side. First on the Dutch side and then later on the French side. Um, and you have this influx of tons and tons of folks coming from different Caribbean islands and different places all over the world to work in the, the tourism industry on the island. Um, and so what ended up happening was the, the um, indigenous population, the local population on the island is actually now a minority because mm. there were so many folks who came in. Um, and of course, you know, legislation is not keeping up with that. So in terms of thinking of, okay, like St. Martin as a place, like what are we doing to preserve certain local customs and, and local practices? Um, you know, that's often left up to, you know, the informal economy, because it's just like, you're not gonna formalize something like that because it's usually just the locals just carry it out because that's their culture. But now right. when that local culture is being challenged by so many other different cultures, to a sense where it's a minority, if that is not established, if that is not um, codified, it's gonna be erased, right? Yeah. Yes, indeed, <laughs> and so, so a lot, so all of that is happening on St. Martin, and I mean like, Again, like like it, it is not. Um, this is not me making a case of of xenophobia, um, and I think that there 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 needs to be that distinction. You know, it's mm -hmm. like there's a difference between xenophobia and um, erasure of indigeneity. You know, um, because yeah. uh, that's you know xenophobia is oftentimes rooted in the myth of erasure, but then there's the actual erasure <laughs> that's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Because you you mentioned, I mean, this idea of erasure and the and the national becomes very interesting. Uh, in our preliminary conversations, we were talking about other sites in the Caribbean in which the folk became the source material for creating a kind of national language uh, mm -hmm. through dance, a vernacular expression and movement. We talked about the processes, for example, or the. Uh, the development in Haiti in the 40s, probably a bit earlier than that, even in the 30s, um, and with the indigenous movement and the creation of this uh, 
national aesthetic and movement using the movement vocabulary from Vaudun. And we see that within Jamaica in the 1960s with the development of the National Dance Theater Company. We see this in, in places like Cuba as well with the development of the uh, Cuban modern dance technique. So this, you know, it, it really presents an interesting case where when the folk that you're trying to resuscitate, if you will, or that you're yeah. hoping could be the source material for creation mm -hmm. are in a minority. But do you see any opportunities with the various other uh, cultural and ethnic and racial um, uh, groups and, and communities present on the island in terms of creating something that isn't necessarily, um, that is more porous in its understanding of nationalism? Do you, do you yeah. see that, that, that space for creation of borrowing, of pulling together from these different um, sources that are present on the island now, especially since the indigenous population is in, is in decline, indigenous being its, its native population? Yes, uh, I think you, you mentioned a number of really interesting things. Um, and so I do wanna say that there is a push towards the codification of our national dance, which is, you know, it's, it's relatively recent if you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, this happened in, you know, in 1988, that's when they started doing interviews with elders and um, trying to figure out like, okay, like, so the Panam is a dance of emancipation. It's a dance of Panam. the Panam. The Panam mm -hmm. is a national dance of St. Martin and it's it's emancipatory. It is, it came out of emancipation. Um, and so the, the, the work that's being done on the Panam happened a lot, um, in in the late eighties and then later later with um with the iconic uh, Clara Reyes she did her thesis on the Panam and so yes. a lot of her research is is what uh, we are building on with the Panam and so she really was institutional to to codifying it and to making sure that you know it's not just like a like oh this is from the Panam or this is from the Panam and it becomes like this just like hodgepodge of of stuff like she she really wanted to twenty to have yeah. It. Yeah, she wanted to institutionalize it. Like, okay, these are the steps. This is where this comes from. This is where this comes from. So there is there is that happening. Um, there is that that um, you know um, recovery and reclamation of of Saint Martin because that that is Saint Martin. That is right. that is core indigenous. You know, like that is that is what we have. We have the Panam. So there is that happening. But then at the same time that that's happening, there is a lot of borrowing. There is a lot of um. You know, a uh, 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 um, amalgamation of of different right. customs and cultures coming together, and and you see that a lot in our music. You know, in our music, it's it's not uncommon to hear instruments from different parts of the Caribbean. To hear, you know, Papiamento, English, French, Spanish, Creole, all of that in one Saint Martin <laughs> song. Yeah. You know, yeah. and everybody and everybody knows what what it's talking about. You know, so it 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 is um, definitely uh, becoming common. Um, you know, like when when you go to a party and and you're, it's as common to hear zouk as it is to hear bachata as it is to hear soca as it mm -hmm. is to hear. You know, and so there yeah. are definitely these um these these uh, forces coming together, uh, and it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong; it's it's beautiful, and I, I love that about Saint Martin because it's so unique in that sense. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it, it cannot be at the expense of the indigenous culture that's being lost. So it needs to happen hand in hand. That balance. Exactly. Yeah, that balance. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I want to turn now, Jonathan, to your uh, specific journey as a as a creator, as a dancer, um, you know, and you know, getting to that place in your own training at home and recognizing, okay, I need to go further afield. Can you talk to us about um, that trajectory, that journey to the United States and um, who you were influenced by in this in that moment? Um, I believe in Minnesota, of all places, lovely, <laughs> cold, but you know, kind of was like a polar opposite to St. Martin. No? But if you could tell me about that particular journey, what led you there, and who were some of the dancers you had an opportunity to work with and train with? Sure. So, um, so right out of St. Martin, so I, I did my primary school and my high school in St. Martin, um, and um, actually wasn't very involved in dance while I was on mm -hmm. St. Martin. I was involved in capoeira, and so I always regard capoeira as my introduction to dance. That was kind of my my springboard for jumping off into into other dance fields. Oh, um, beautiful! Beautiful to that you mentioned that in terms of 
the the kind of innate mm -hmm. uh, uh, quality of dance that is within the martial arts, especially the Afro art martial arts form, like capoeira. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and just thinking about like um, capoeira, I think taught me. Um, it taught me flow. It taught me um, how to how to really just give into the body without really you know thinking. Because when you're when you're in the in the hoda, the hoda. <laughs> and, and you're you know you're playing against someone else, and it's like you can't really think. You just have to go. It just it has to be a constant flow of movement, a constant conversation, a constant um, giving and taking. And I feel like that okay. has definitely. Um, been included in in the other dances that I I later on learned, mm -hmm. um, so I'm always going to be grateful for for capoeira as my springboard, um, and and I still do practice capoeira, um, and so when I left, uh, I spent I first spent two years in Canada and then I I went to the U S and in the U S I. I was the type of person, it's like, once I got into dance, any dance class that was available for me, that's the dance I would take, you know? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. it didn't matter what it was. And so I was all over the place. I was um, in modern, I was in contemporary. Um, I really, really connected to um, my my West African dance teacher in, in college, um, Sister Patricia Brown. Um, and she, uh, she taught me so much um, mm -hmm. from the way that not only in terms of movement and and movement quality, um, <laughs> she she would always tell me, um, "You are so big. You are so long. You have such a a vast facility. You need to use your body." <laughs> and I can mm -hmm. hear her voice. Hear her voice. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was just like, what is she talking about? Like, what? Yeah. Is she <laughs> like, I hear what she's saying, but like, I don't know how to use that information until one day it just clicked, and then I was just like, oh, like, you know, it it dropped in, and so the fact that she was willing to um really invest in me before I was, you know, any kind of dancer, like she she was just really willing to pour into me. Um, that just that means so much, and the way that she conducted the space from. From that space, I really took a sense of, of family, a sense of unity, and oh, a wonderful. sense of solidarity. Um, it was definitely a, a very safe space for me in a predominantly white college. You know, it's in Minnesota, um, and so it it was uh, it was beautiful. And so um, from there, I I later trained with um, Jinan Saint Just. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, yeah. she has a company yeah. called yeah. Afro Uh You know, she she's. Haitian, uh, her mm -hmm. mom, Florencia Pierre, uh, mm -hmm. iconic Haitian woman, yes. very influential in the arts, um, also a Vodun priestess, um, and, and her brother, Jeff Pierre, who yes. plays the drums, and you know, just, just a very um, amazing family. That, indeed, that, indeed. Yeah, it, it became a family art, and being a part of that space really showed me, um, you know, the, the importance of lineage, the importance of heritage, and also, um, with with the dances that they taught and with traditional Haitian dance, every single dance has a place, a purpose. You know, it's mm -hmm. like if you're doing Nago, then it's it's here. This is this is the this is what Nago was created for. If you're doing Igbo, it's it's here. If you're doing yeah, Pitbull, exactly. if you're doing Congo, it's like yeah. everything was like created with a very specific idea in mind. And you when you dance that you are embodying that and you are right. allowing that energy to then yeah. possess you, you know? And so- So you're kind um, of embodying that scriptive narrative of yes. the history, of locality, of geography, of all of that. Wonderful. Of all of those things. And it was, it was beautiful for me as mm -hmm. a Caribbean body to then be introduced to this in Minnesota of all places. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and really have, have that uh, awakening, I guess you could say. Um, and it was just, I, I'm forever grateful for my experiences in that space with Afu Tayi. Um, and then I would say the third uh, super influential space that I was able to be a part of was Ananya Dance Theater. Um, mm -hmm. I was a part of that company for two years and um, that was completely, um, I, I wanna say foreign to, to the history of my body. You know, if you think of, of me as, as a, a black man from the Caribbean, um, it's like there's a certain relationship I have with West African dance. There's a certain relationship I have with Haitian dance. But then when it came to Ananya Dance Theater, I was, <laughs> you know, the, You're the on wedding the was gone. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was a visitor. I was a guest in that space. Um, 
first as a man, you know, because that space was predominantly for, you know, it was, it was for women and specifically women of color. Um, and it was for them to tell those stories and to use that as, as healing. Um, and so me being a visitor in that space as, as a male body, um, it, it was definitely an interesting experience because, um, you know, as, as we were talking yesterday, we were, we, were, we were talking about, you know, like not every story is yours to tell. It's our story to tell, exactly. You know, yeah. um, and so yeah. I, was, I was honored to, to be able to assist in, in the telling of certain stories while knowing that I wasn't telling my own story. You know, it's like yeah. it, it wasn't coming from a personal experience. It was coming from a place of allyship. Um, allyship, of gratitude even. Of gratitude, know, yeah. yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Um, I'm wondering if we could look at your first, the first image, um, because I think it's a nice moment to go into that in terms of the work of narrative or the, the, the place of narrative within your own work and specifically as it relates to your crossing, yeah, and the significance of the Atlantic in your own meditation, movement, moving or movement meditation. So Atlantis 13, one of the pieces you created uh, well, during your time in Minnesota, bringing together these uh, various strands of, of influences and bodies and mm -hmm. um, experiences. And I just want you to just take us through this. I mean, there, there, there's so much hair in this gorgeous image. So a big up to the photographer that captured this, this piece. And it's, it's like you're cocooned. There's a sense of home but there's so much movement in this so what what was atlantis for you the motivating factor for um creating this work and part one of that question and part two what does the atlantic mean for you sure um so atlantis 13 that that is um that is my baby. <laughs> that, that, that work, that work. Uh, I oftentimes just look at the work that I that I did in, a, in Atlantis, and I feel like that's my life's work. You know, like I feel like that's that's my oh, life. One, purpose. you still have a ways to go. <laughs> I, exactly, exactly. You know, it, it just keeps on expanding because there's so much to explore. And so, just a little bit of background. Um, you know, I'm working with my my co choreographer for Atlantis 13, Peace Matamutsa. Um, he's from Zimbabwe. We went to school together and he, his ideas are just <laughs> insane. And so it's like you have this guy from the Caribbean and this guy from the continent and we're coming together and we're creating this, this work that is for people, um, people who are trying to explore their connections to each other as, as diasporic beings, as, as folks who, you know, are from the continent or from the diaspora. And it's like, okay, like, we understand that there was this rupture that happened, but but now what? You know, we yes. are together now. You know, so so where where do we where do we fall um, in this in this long arc of of history? Um, and so it was it was just a beautiful exploration. There was you know folks in the cast from Nigeria, from Botswana, from from the Caribbean, from different parts of the U.S. Um, and it's like all of us have such vastly different relationships to blackness. Um, and, and the way that we experience our, our bodies. Um, and so to bring all of those together in one conversation was just beautiful. It was a beautiful um, experience. Um, and, uh, and to answer the, the second part, you know, it's like our relationship, our relationship to the Atlantic, you know, it's like I, I grew up on St. Martin and half of St. Martin is covered by the Caribbean Sea and half of it is covered by the Atlantic Ocean. And so, um, you know, I, I grew up seeing the Atlantic Ocean, you know, almost almost every day. Um, mm. that, that, that is a constant reminder of like, um, you know, as, as I was saying before in our conversation, um, uh, you know, you can, you can see the, you can see St. Bart's, you can see Saba, <laughs> you can see St. Kitts, you can see Anguilla, you see all of these, these sister islands around you and you're yeah. reminded of, of these ties that you have, these, these mm. connections that you have connected by, by the Atlantic connected by water, you know, but then mm -hmm. it's also this reminder of, of the medium that was used to bring you to the Caribbean, you know, um, uh, that, because we, we were brought here. At the right. end of the day, we were brought here. Um, and so it's like at the same time that the, the water and the Atlantic is a source of, 
connection it's also a source of division and it's also a source of trauma and so yes. how do we how do we use that um that uh, those complexities and those contradictions to to make sense of our existence Indeed. Um, and i think you know that's that's where the idea of atlantis you know a, a city submerged by water it's like we were using that as our grounding point of okay now we are submerged by the thing that connects us and divides us. So how are we going to, to, to grow from this? How are we going to thrive in this, in this situation? What kind of world are we going to create for ourselves? Yeah, I really like, I like this idea of that submergement, this submerged uh, city, because we all know, you know, well, when many uh, sacred systems from the continent, the African continent and their, and their developments in the, broad African diaspora view the Atlantic Ocean as a sacred site, right? Mm. We all know it was the thoroughfare through which that that uh, the passage happened, um, but it's also the first and the largest cemetery, right? That mm. we, pay, we pay homage to in our rites and in our rituals. And so to think of those ocean dwellers, right? To think of those beings at mm. the bottom of the ocean being renewed because what i see in this work is this idea of renewal mm -hmm. and through renewal a certain level of reclamation a reclamation of self a reclamation of the collective and this idea of um, continuity notwithstanding the rupture right mm -hmm. yes the, the rupture didn't siphon off completely that there were uh, there was the ability to to still be in motion and to recreate and to regenerate, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if we could see image five, and and I with the bodies moving across this space and um, passage, this notion of passage for you, uh, and if you could relate that then to your journey back home, right? Mm -hmm. Right, because there, there's a, it's an interesting, there's a, this is an a iconic kind of imagery of what we may recall of the, the experience of that middle passage, of that journey. And I'm wondering if that is what is animating this or is it a return for you? Is there something else that is happening in this particular piece that we see here? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, you definitely gave me a, a lot to think about just now. Um, I think you know, in in creating Atlantis thirteen, it was it was beautiful because we were able to, um, you know, come at it from such different vantage points. Um, but you know, back to what we were saying about Saint Martin, and you know how Saint Martin has so many different types of people from so many different types of places. Um, I wanted to. I really wanted to explore, you know, like, okay, what if all the dancers are from St. Martin? You know, that is still incredible diversity within that, you know? Indeed. So how do we, who are all from the same place, how do we experience, you know, blackness differently? How do we experience um, what it means to be Caribbean, what it means to, to be unified, what it, you know, like, so, so, this I, I love this image, um, this softness, this um, this it's rest. Cur it's almost like a caress, a caressing of each yes. other. Yes, yeah. yes, and and yeah. and this this moment happens um, in one of the pieces, and it's right, it's sandwiched by turmoil. <laughs> so there's yeah. turmoil right before this image, and there's turmoil right afterwards. But there's can we still... see the image just before this one? I saw image four and three just to get a sense of that duality that you speak of, that, that kind of tension. Because this definitely, um, if we were to map your own journey across these images, it would be interesting to see how you found peace in your own journey of getting to where you are now and what you're doing now. But before we get to that, if you could talk to me about what's here and then linking it to where you are now. Sure. So this is this is an explosion. Honestly, this is yeah. this is something that's ready to to blow. You know, this is um, for Atlantis thirteen. Um, we we choreographed uh, um, an uprising on a ship. You know, and and this is that moment where it's uh, like everything is about to 
to pop off, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, everything has been brewing, 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 brewing. And then after a while, it's just about to go, you know? And so this is that, that moment of just like, you know, all right, like, like we're ready to take our liberation. We're ready to, to do what we have to do already, you know? And so um, this compared to that, you know, that softness, that, that touch, you know, that, that rest that happens. Um, it's, it's, it's different, but they're both so important. They're, they're such important moments, um, within our trajectory as, as Caribbean people. And so, but even in this explosive moment, i my eyes are drawn to the, the softness of the wrist. So mm -hmm. even in the explosion, the hands remain, there's a certain quality of aliveness, but it's still tender, mm -hmm. right? That, you know, that there, even amidst the struggle and the confrontation and the resistance, the humanity of those who are fighting is still able to be expressed in their bodies. And I yes. see it primarily in how you're you're using the arc of the elbow and the mm -hmm. arc of the, of the how the wrist is flowing and how the fingers drape. There's there's a really beautiful quality here that actually works with the the cloth as well quite well. Mm -hmm. um, gorgeous, gorgeous. So after your time uh, in the United States, in Minnesota, um, it came a moment where home was calling yeah. and, and you decided to, to come back. And how has that return been? Because we know every crossing, mm -hmm. every crossing has the potential for return. You know? mm -hmm. and, and even in that, um, the initial crossing across the Middle Passage, we know people return through trance, people return through their art. So mm -hmm. even if physically that sense of return is, is um, attenuated by all of these different circumstances that sometimes forestall the actual return, sure. um, we, we know that we return in many ways, but you had an opportunity to, and you had a choice that you've made to return, to have your feet back on the soil in St. Martin. And how has that return been? And, and what has, how have it uh, provoked you in another way to continue your, your work? Sure. Um, so I think this, this gets back to, you know, what we were talking about earlier in terms of nation building. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of the dance practice that I do with the Nia Dance Company um, as, as nation building, because, you know, um, it's, it's taken a, a life of its own. Um, and what we are doing is we're trying to, um, we're, we're trying to, uh, share the, the history of, of what we have been through as people and where we would like to go as people. So, so for, for reference, um, Atlantis Rebirth, um, that's that's the show that I'm choreographing with the Nia Dance Company, um, and that's purely bodies from Saint Martin. Um, and I, I mean bodies from Saint Martin, but again, Saint Martin has folks from from all over, you know. And so there's there's still folks from all walks of life. And so um, the first the first half of the show is just a series of different stories, historical stories, where we go through um, different experiences of of Caribbean folks who have been fighting for liberation. And so. It starts off with the story of the Garifuna people. Um, mm. So the Garifuna people, um, uh, just a little bit of history. There was a, a ship that, that was full of enslaved bodies who um, it shipwrecked off the coast of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And um, these folks found their way onto shore and they were then integrated into the Carib society. Um, but the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, but but the the level at which they were um, integrated into into the society, um, it wasn't necessarily favorable. There was still a lot of tension. There was still a lot of strife. Um, and so already we see like this this butting of heads. And so um, these folks um, later escaped to to the mountains, and there they met up with maroons, um, and they formed their own society. And they used to uh, create raids on Kalinago societies. And so now you have this this warring of, of the indigenous versus the African, right? Um, and so the Kalinago decided to team up with European uh, colonizers to exile the, the African um, uh, population 
to uh, Roatan, which is an island off the coast of Honduras. Um, and so that, that is the story of the Garifuna people. And so it's like this, this because that exile happened, um, there's still so much of, of their culture that's still intact, their language that's still intact, their dances, their, their food, um, and and they still tell stories of Saint Vincent, you know. Yeah, the Punta, um, you're you're mean, the homeland. Yeah, you're mean. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, um, and so uh, I thought it was so important because it's such an a interesting story of us as people. You know, it's like this is all of the things that that you know, all of the different tensions of Caribbean folks with the indigenous and the African and the European and just, you know, all of these different factors at play. And then you have this exile. And in so many ways, like we as Caribbean people have have been made to exile certain parts of ourselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, part of the struggle of being Caribbean is is trying to reconcile with what was exiled. You know, it's like, how do we bring together all of these different parts of ourselves that are actually in in constant contradiction you know it's like like we as people are are you know products of so many different contradictions of colonialism and pillage and slavery and 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 rape and and there's just so much trauma you know that that is rooted at our existence and so how do we move forward as people and be whole um, and so uh, we start off with that story, and then from there we go into, you know, a story that's on Saint Martin, and and uh, it, it's the story of um, uh, a massacre that happened in Saint Martin in 1830. Um, so this is happening against the backdrop of of you know Haiti becoming the first Black Republic in the world. That happens in 1804, and so. You know, Saint Martin in 1830 is just like, okay, Haiti is free. Like, what is happening? You know, it's it's been a minute. You know, um, <laughs> why aren't we free? You know, and right. to a point where they just walk off the plantation. They literally walk off the plantation on the French wow. side, and they go to Marigo, and Marigo is the capital on the French side, and and they say, you know what? Like, we're free. We're free. We're, we're not going to ask you for our freedom. We we took our freedom. We are free. You know, and there's, that's such a powerful moment of not requesting, you know, you're not asking for it. You are demanding, yeah. you are letting them know. We're giving you notice. We are free, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and they were killed for it. <laughs> they were yeah. massacred. They were absolutely brutalized. Um, but but still, there is still such power in that, you know? So, is this a, is this part of a history that is silenced or is it- Yeah, so this is- part again, of the popular discourse around like so the history is, that you're taught in St. Martin? No, so this is very mm. unknown. A lot of folks don't know about this. September, September 26th was actually the 190th anniversary of this massacre that took place. Wow. And it's just, again, St. Martin be, as a colonized place is not really able to institutionalize certain dates and, and, and customs and heroes that, that we would have been able to if we um, we're calling certain shots, you know, and so. Um, so stuff what like do you that. see? So mm -hmm. what do you see? Your role, your role is as a dancer, as a choreographer, as an artist, in terms of using movement to fill those gaps and silences, to kind of um, undo some of the damage and the violence of the archive and of the of public discourse that annihilates through denial or through erasure. How do you see yourself as an artist and using dance as a medium mm -hmm. to, to share, to, to bring those things to the fore? Or um, is it something that you do consciously or is it? Is it no, that's something that I do very consciously. Um, <laughs> very <laughs> consciously. So, I mean, the first thing is um, I research for myself. And so I do a lot of self-research. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of investigating and digging and talking because you know, not everything is written down. I, the reason I found out about this is because I was having a conversation with Clara, by, uh, not about mm. that, about something completely different. And then I found out about this. Um, mm. So again, and then I started researching and then, you know, and then um, I'm not gonna keep that knowledge to myself. So I, I bring it to my dancers. We watch documentaries, we watch wow. um, videos, we read articles, we talk about it. We, we then create improvs about it. You know, it's like, okay, if you were in this situation, like. What does that look like for you? What would you do? You know, and then we we do um, movement explorations based on um, that. Um, 
And so, um, and then from there, it's like, then we create the choreo, well, I create the choreography. Um, and then, uh, then we're able to show that. And then that becomes a, a springboard for conversation in, in the larger uh, population, you know? It's like, oh, like, did you know this happened? And then, um, you know, and then that, again, the, the dance is nation building, dance is history, dance is archive, dance is memory. Um, all, all of those things are so in, in um, imperative in, in, in the dance practice. And so bringing that critical narrative, that, that critique um, to, to my work, especially on St. Martin is, is so, so important for me. Wow. Oh gosh, Jonathan, I could speak to you all, all, all day, but I want to um, give our listeners and those who are tuned in an opportunity to also ask questions uh, that they may have, and then we could continue to dig a little deeper, but uh, thank you for what you've offered so far. So if there's anyone out there that have a question for Jonathan, uh, please feel free to share and uh, we'll be able to have this opportunity of a broader dialogue with with uh, Jonathan here this evening. But before even, um, okay, here we have one. Um, the notion of Caribbeanness and its complexity, diversity, and unity is such a powerful thing. And I think you encapsulate that quite well, Jonathan. So I wonder, this person is asking, I wonder if Jonathan has had the opportunity to travel much to the other islands within the region as well. So in your own journey um, and experiences, have you been able to travel to other spaces in the Caribbean? Yes, um, I've been. <laughs> so well, my mom, my mom, is from Lucia, exactly. <laughs> my mom is from St. Lucia. My dad is, he's born in Aruba. He grew up in Bonaire. Um, and so um, I also have those histories within my body as well. And so mm -hmm. my whole mom's side is from St. Lucia. I've been to St. Lucia multiple times. Uh, I've been to Bonaire. I've been to Curacao, Aruba, you know, Seba, Stacia, um, St. Kitts, St. Bart's, Nevis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Anguilla, Martinique, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah Barbados. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have not been to many of the larger, larger. islands. Which is I an have, interesting thing. Yeah, because like, really, yeah, you're kind of yeah, the inverse yeah. of, the, of what tends to happen where, you know, the first time off your rock is onto a bigger rock. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you, you have kind of this, this really interesting uh, movement close to home and then also further afield. And that idea of ties, family ties, mm -hmm. that allows you to move uh, to these different spaces. But I like what you say about, you know, carrying the, those histories in your body. Yeah, that our, our DNA isn't just in our blood in that kind yeah. of way, but it, it comes out in our muscle memory. It mm -hmm. comes out in what, what, uh, what movements we're inspired to do and how we do them. Yeah. Any other questions from our audience? Uh, so Kay Jadia is asking, how did your previous experiences contribute to your leadership and to your vision and movement in Atlantis 13? Um, so um, I would definitely say, um, one thing that we tried to do was to implement um, certain rituals in our practice. So for example, we would always start off our rehearsal by, by joining arms. Um, we'd, we'd be in a circle and we'd just breathe together. And then we'd look into each other's eyes and everyone would say one word about how they feel right now. Um, and so just this idea of, of grounding, of focusing, of centering, um, and then also knowing what other people are bringing into the space. Um, we, we start and we end every single rehearsal like that. Um, and mm -hmm. so that, that's something that, that we didn't necessarily do that in other spaces, but I saw the need for it. You know, it's like that experience of other spaces and, you know, other people creating solidarity and unity. I was like, okay, how do I create solidarity and unity in my space, in my own way? Um, and so we brought that. Um, I want to say we am um, talking about me and Peace because Peace was my co-choreographer for Atlanta 13. Um, yeah, and then in terms of um, movement, you know, um, movement. I've I've never been a purist. You know, I've never been mm. someone who's like, okay, this is 
um, modern contemporary or this is this or this is that. Uh, for me, it's always about um, what movement is best suited for the story that you're trying to tell. You know, mm -hmm. what, what aesthetic is gonna best bring that story across. And then also what, what, what movement is in the bodies of the folks that you're working with, you know? And so the, the, the combination of those two things always informs the type of work that's created. Um, and I think that gets into the question of, you know, authenticity and, um, mm -hmm. you know, like having folks be true to, to, to who they are and um, uh, what, they, what they bring and what they carry, um, because that, that's always going to create for a richer experience for both the dancer and the audience. Um, so I, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else want to offer? comments or questions so from patrick um so you left your home in saint martin to develop your craft and find yourself through the arts how has the return home been for you as a cultural practitioner yeah. um uh i mean it's been amazing in a lot of senses because there's so much going on martin, <laughs> yes emerging is popping man you gotta yeah. book a flight <laughs> Honestly, St. Martin, there is so much going on. Folks are really just creating and, and, and doing stuff and, and putting themselves out there. And it's been great to be a part of that development, you know. And um, I, I still think there's a long way to go because folks are making something out of nothing, like absolutely nothing. Um, Sorry to cut you. Is, it, is this across all of the disciplines within the arts, or do you find that it's um, yeah. particularly in one area, or is it? So it's, it's across the visual arts. Yeah, music, visual arts, performing arts, art of visual like, film. You know, mm -hmm. um, film. The film industry is really taken off too in Saint Martin, and it's it's great because I mean, again, people are doing this with such few resources. Like Saint Martin doesn't even have a national theater, you know, like we, where, where are we going to show this work? You know, where are we going to take this professionalism to? And so we're creating <laughs> this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we also have to create the spaces where we show this stuff, you know? But it also, it also, I mean, the same way that you're mentioning about, you know, finding the forms that allow the narratives to come through more authentically, you know, I see more site-specific work then in the absence of a theater yep. you know, using the spaces that are available to you and, yep. and 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 telling those stories. So your your transition, what I'm hearing is that your transition home has been welcoming, it has been enriching, yep. mm -hmm. and and you've been able to to blossom in this this new moment that's yeah. happening. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's been yeah, very warm, very, very warm. And thanks to, to those who've laid that groundwork. Clara Reyes, mm -hmm. a big hug and big up to you for all the work you've done throughout the years in terms of fighting for, for dance in, 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 in St. Martin. And then, you know, passing on that torch with, with mm -hmm. your work, Jonathan. Um, so we have about three more questions. So if those could come in and then we could uh, begin to come to our, our end soon enough. Denise Robinson, how was it working? Oh, thank you, Denise, for this question. It was actually one that I had for him yesterday. Um, but how was it working in the feminine healing space? And, and, and the fact, and I wanna just add on something, the fact that most of your main teachers were women, right? Mm -hmm. And how was it for you? And, and how do you interpret that on their, your own body? But expanding on to, on what Denise is asking here in terms of working in this feminine healing space of an wow. mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, I I was I was actually very comfortable. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a it wasn't a space of discomfort for me. And so even though knowing that um that the stories and and the the processes were not necessarily my own, um, I definitely think that. I don't know. It 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 wasn't a source of of agitation or discomfort or, um, and I mean, you know, growing up, I'm the only boy of two sisters, um, and so uh, I've been surrounded by women my whole life. Um, my my best friends have always been women. Um, my you know, very close to my mom, um, 
And so, yeah, for, for me, it was, it was, um, ew. I don't want to say it felt natural because I feel like that might be pushing it a little bit, but, but it was, it was, it was, I don't know. It, it just, it, it wasn't, yeah, there wasn't much, much tension, you know, and again, as a, as a queer body, it's, it's, it's a little bit different coming into a space. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I would be curious to hear, um, what, uh, the women who I shared space with. Yeah. How they, they felt. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Because there was something they saw in you to invite mm -hmm. you into that space. There's that exactly. space of trust, right? Exactly. And that that yeah. that uh that idea of invitation is exactly it because you literally have to be invited into the space. It's not something you can audition for. It's not something mm -hmm. that you just show up to. Like you need to be invited. And so um I think that also helps knowing that um they saw something in me that that they felt warm towards um yeah so oh, what beautiful recognition <laughs> yeah yeah we have another two questions before we wrap up it's from steffi gums given that we don't learn saint martin's history in school do you think that dance could partly play this role for its people i'm honestly hoping um i'm hoping because i mean my my thing is, you know, I learn stuff and then I teach stuff to my students and to my dancers and then they teach it to their friends and then they teach it to their friends and it expands outward from there. And then also just um, in making this stuff available. So Atlantis Rebirth, we're planning to do a, a virtual launch of it. And so it will be available as a digital archive, you know, like the work. Nice will be available online so folks can watch it folks can view it folks can have conversation about it um and so i i really am hoping that that you know it is not for everyone i don't think everyone is going to take to dance in that sense but i really hope that it can can help with that oh that's wonderful wonderful anyone else out there ah so from lena comelas did you have uh, did you have any regrets of becoming a dance teacher? <laughs> I don't know if you if you use that term, but are you do you have any regret of becoming a dance teacher? So this is actually my student. Um, <laughs> my student asking this question. I'm like, there's an there's an insider thing here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is my student asking this question. So I don't think I can say no. <laughs> <laughs> for all teachers, once we once we you know inhabit that space of of student, you know we always are teaching and we're always receptive. No, but what 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 about you? What are you do you consider yourself uh, a teacher in sorts in terms of uh, what you do and what you impart to your students? Um, I I hmm. I, I would say that, I mean, I love imparting this knowledge to my students. You know, I love it when I see light bulbs go off in their head, like, oh, like, this is that, like, oh, like that, I get it, you know, like, it makes sense. Or like, when they're like, what, you know, like, their whole worldview is just like, what, the, the front side and the dut side weren't, you know, free at the same time, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know? Yeah, they're well, like, I got that moment. <laughs> right? <laughs> they, you know, they're they're shocked. They're because again, no one's ever told that to them before, and they're just like, "What?" You know, because they can't even fathom something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I I do live for those moments. Those are great. Um, will I be a teacher long term? I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> you know, because I definitely see more of my more of my passion in in choreography and in research and um stuff like that um but there's and, a, mm -hmm. i just yeah, want to say there there is a way that choreography is pedagogy you know well. for sure for uh, sure but it's just i prefer yeah, that, that that pedagogy right so. than being in the a studio and you know doing it. exactly you know um so so yeah i mean but it's it's definitely a life lesson it's something that 
um, you know, I'm, I'm going to take with me forever. Um, the bond that I have with the students. Uh, there's, there's some really great kids on Samaritan. And also just in terms of my introduction back to the island, being able to work on two high schools on the island and seeing seeing it through their eyes, you know, because when I left St. Martin, I was a high school student. I was 17, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so yeah. now that I'm coming back and that's who I'm teaching, it's like, wow, like, okay. Full circle, huh? Yeah, this is what has happened in nine years. Okay, I understand, you know? Um, so it's, 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 it has its ups and downs, um, but no regrets. No, definitely yeah. no regrets, Lena. Wonderful. So I wanted to leave you with the, if you have any closing um, remarks or if you want to leave something with us this evening, this afternoon rather, uh, in terms of your vision for the future, for St. Martin, for the Caribbean, for this region we love dearly. Uh, is there anything you want to, to share? Um, I would say, um, I think something that I've learned and one of my biggest takeaways is that, um, and I, I said this recently, I have a, a podcast where we talk about, you know, um, different types of history on St. Martin and, and our relationship to it. Um, so shout out to my Mele co-host. Um, mm -hmm. But um, one of the things that we talked about is that, you know, nation building is not an accident. This is something that's intentional. This is something that has to be intentional because if you are not intentionally building your nation someone else is um and so especially as colonial subjects um take that as you will but especially as colonial subjects it's really important to think about how are we building our nation and what does that look like and what tools are we equipping the future the future um generations with yeah. um, and so that's something I take with me um, always in my art practice, in, in my dance, in the things that I create. You know, what am I doing with my art? What am I doing with my platform? Um, and so, you know, if, if, if more people think along those lines of, okay, like nation building, we are building this nation, you know, because Martin is, is young, it's, yeah. it's, you know? Um, so in what senses are we contributing to the furthering of it? Um, yeah, I think we'd we'd be in a better place. Um, vision is is everything. Oh, indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, Jonathan. There's just so much here, such richness in your in and wisdom in your words and in your vision and in your craft. Uh, thank you for sharing a little piece of yourself with us today, a bit of your ashe, your vital energy and force. Um, so. Uh, yeah, this is not, you know, so long. This is until we, we have another encounter um, <laughs> virtually or on land or wherever in the world, um, hopefully in St. Martin. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep on keeping on, keep on shining that light brightly. And we always give thanks to the teachers of, whom, of whose shoulders we stand. And I'm sure they're so proud of you for what you've, you're doing and what you will continue to do. So before I, I turn off, uh, we turn off today, uh, in closing, I'd just like to express huge thanks again to Catapult Partners, the Catapult Partners, including the American Friends of Jamaica, Kingston Creative, Fresh Milk for making these series a reality and making them happen. Please remember to tune in again at 4 p.m. Atlantic time this afternoon for my discussion with Trinidadian dancer and cultural practitioner, Sonia Dumas. So the conversations continue at 4 p.m. And until then, everyone walk good, dance brightly, and just have a beautiful day. And we'll see each other again soon. Jonathan, give thanks. Give thanks to you and all the very best what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. One love all.